Shiz. France. Oops, hit the video one. I need to do picture only. I know it's noisy here, um, but it's where I'm at. I'm under the uh, 183 freeway, or highway, as they call it, Highway 183, and Burnett Avenue and Research. And um, just uh, a couple of things, Google Glass. Um, if I had that kind of money, I would get Google Glass. I mean, it's, it's a wonderful thing. And I would love to try out that technology. As you guys know, I'm a Microsoft fan, but I'm also into technology. Any technology, whether it's Google, Apple, Microsoft, uh, Oracle, uh, Sun, you know, uh, plane, train, automobiles. I'm into all kinds of technology, and I'm also into thrills, like roller coasters, bungee jumping, and I'm also interested in the latest um, technology as far as what are you using for a bungee jump. So, you know, it's, yes, I might have my preferences, doesn't mean I don't dislike other technology. So, um, I haven't been logged in a long time. As you guys know, we're trying to get a life together. We're not in the extended state anymore. We're now at the Eternal Lodge, and that was the kind of a reddish building over there that you saw. And we're going to be there for maybe another night, and then we're going to have a room share with other couples in the house that's above this thing. So, we never really lived with anybody before, not like the rent like, you know, quarter and fifty bucks a month, it's not too bad. And I may be getting a job here pretty soon, finally. So we'll see how that goes. Outside of that, so nothing else is happening. And, like, there is light at the end of the tunnel. I ran into a bad patch for a little bit. The website went down for about two weeks. No, the bus I was down for about five days. But it finally kind of came back up again. It finally got back up again, and um, hopefully it will stay up again, or forever. <laughs> so, yep. This is Shiz. What up? Shiz. I didn't know it was on video. It was too late to change it.
That is beautiful. A few vlogs back, I mentioned that they had Braille at the bus stops, and I never seen it until now. They also got the mobile barcode, and if it's at night, you know you can't really scan this during the, you know, at night or when it's dark. So you can scan this, or at night you can either call, text, or browse a website. Either way, you know, you use your mobile phone for it. So this is, you know, two ways to get time when you're at a stop trying to figure out what time your bus comes. And also, no smoking. <laughs> I know, I'm breaking the law here, so I better step away just for a second. As far as um, energy is concerned, I was thinking about these uh, tall telephone poles. These are the long distance um, high energy lines. You know, versus these right here are local. These are longer distances. And they're, they run on DC power, I believe, right? I mean, aren't those on DC? And they're converted to AC for these lines? I, I'm not sure, exactly sure about that, but um, you see right here? This is a radio tower but it's also a cell phone tower. And there are little cell phone uh, tenants right there. So what I'm looking at is, oh, here's an, well, I just noticed this one. Whenever you stand in the city, if you're, especially in a major city, you can just stand in one place, no matter where you are, and there's a 90% chance you're going to see cell phone towers. There's another one right there. One right there, and one right there. Okay, I know the light kind of blurted out a little bit. And I bet you there's probably another one if I look around some more. Okay, I'm not seeing it right away. But I'm thinking that you can put windmills and solar panels on top of these. On top of these high power uh, lines. And now, not knowing about how electricity works and all that, what I'm thinking about is the uh, like a miniature sized windmill. So like on top of this, you will have a smaller windmill spinning and can act as a power to the grid. It can add power to the grid. And, um, and it, it basically, in the solar panel, I mean, this is a very sunny state. It's windy most of the time here in Texas. And in most cities like um, the Plains, um, Texas, Phoenix, um, the Windy City, Chicago, and many cities like that, they can put these windmills on top of these poles and have them distributed, distributed throughout the city. And this will reduce the amount of power that we have to generate from coal tremendously. And it's just, I know, even if it adds a small percentage, let's say 2%, that's a lot better than 0%. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm talking about adding a wind on every one of those high towers or uh, high poles like that, and you, you've seen the bigger ones that goes very long distances, um, the huge ones. You know, they can put windmills on those and solar panels if it's, you know, a city that has good sun throughout the year. And this city does. It's sunny most of the year. Now, we have a storm coming in tomorrow, but how often does that happen? Not very often. So that's what I'm talking about is we're, we can really add I mean, that part right there, one windmill will probably add 1% of the electricity to the grid. If you had one to every pole, can you imagine the amount of um, power you can generate? And then they, now, we're talking about, I'm talking about small, not, not the big ones you see out in the country areas. I'm thinking about on the smaller telephone poles, they have those, um, they look like turbine engines. And they can put those on, on every one of these poles to help generate some power as well. Now that will probably generate 0.2%, but the thing is, 0.2% on every pole, it will add up eventually to 200%, 300%, okay? We're talking about a complete uh, reduction of having to dig up our earth and, and reduce our resources. 
Now, the Earth does produce plenty of coal. There's plenty of coal. Don't let the uh, environment, environmentalists fool you. However, you know, imagine how much power we can generate if we install these windmills on every single pole in the city. It will be a tremendous reduction of how much religious we've got to produce in the current way we're doing it today. And any lakes and oceans and rivers that has a lot of current, they can install those turbine engines under the lakes, putting some type of net over it so that the fish won't get chopped up in it. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm talking about some great advantages to this, and that's all i got to say about that. I just kind of had a thought. Shiz. Rants.